carpal tunnel surgery or carpal tunnel release is done uh, on people who have carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, carpal tunnel syndrome is the common uh, term that we use uh, for uh, what's called median neuropathy. And median neuropathy, it just refers to the median nerve, the nerve that is being squeezed in that carpal tunnel. And neuropathy means uh, irritation of that nerve or, or uh, dysfunction of that nerve. Um, so somebody who has dysfunction of the median nerve in the carpal tunnel will typically have numbness and tingling in their first three uh, fingers, so their thumb, uh, index, and middle finger. Um, that numbness can extend back up into the forearm a little bit, and I've seen people who have had pain all the way up into their shoulder associated with this. Um, that is less common, of course, but, um, but certainly I, I have been able to see patients who have had that and had relief when that nerve root was decompressed. Um, once the uh, person comes in and they have these, uh, this finding uh, on EMG, which is an uh, electrical nerve test to see that the nerve is dysfunctional, um, they will oftentimes tell me that their hand wakes them up at nighttime, they have to shake it to get relief, or that when they're driving, their hands will go numb. Um, many times their history will include uh, work where they've had to use their hands in a repetitive fashion. Um, and um, this is the type of patient who typically will come in with carpal tunnel syndrome and require a carpal tunnel release. Everybody has a crease at the end of their wrist right before their palm. That's called the distal wrist crease. Um, and I make an incision starting there and going about two centimeters or just short, uh, uh, just slightly less than an inch into the palm, in the middle of the palm. Um, once I uh, have done that, um, there's soft tissue between uh, my incision site and the ligament, which needs to be uh, cut. Um, and I retract that so that I can see the ligament. Once the ligament is exposed, I take a small scalpel and I open that ligament enough for me to see the underlying nerve. When I can see that underlying nerve, I use special scissors to carefully cut the ligament both towards the uh, forearm and into the hand until I can see that nerve is completely comp decompressed and no longer under pressure. Once that has been done, I make sure there's no bleeding, and uh, when there is none, then uh, I'll close the skin and, and put them in a, uh, a wrap that protects that area, where, which they usually will wear for about five days. I'll see them back in the office in about two weeks for stitches to be removed. I ask people who have had a carpal tunnel release not to do things with their hands in a wide open position. I don't mind if they use the keyboard with their hands in a more closed position, and I don't mind if they manipulate their phone with a closed hand, but that real wide open hand position I ask them to avoid. Additionally, I don't want them to push on that or put pressure on that hand. Um, uh, anything that can put stress on their suture line is what I, uh, I ask them to try to avoid doing. Um, once they have healed that incision and the sutures are out, then I'll begin to have them uh, start to regain some of that hand strength by squeezing uh, a tennis ball or a, uh, or a racket ball. Um, sometimes even those stress balls work good. Um, I don't want them to soak that hand uh, in standing water because that will increase the risk of infection, but I don't have any problem at all with them taking a shower and letting water run across the area.